how to be an artist. In this video, I'm going to give you some of my uh, slightly unpopular art opinions. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle and on this channel you'll find all things watercolour as well as some mixed media, even some business and motivation for artists, drawing as well. Please do consider subscribing. If you click the bell icon, you can get notified every time I have a new video for you. Make at least one free video a week here on YouTube on a Thursday with extra content for Patreon subscribers. So earlier this year I made a video called Unpopular Watercolour Opinions in which I sort of sounded off on a few things that I generally um, I disagree with or I have a different opinion on and as I was writing that video I sort of I made a list of things as you always do when you're planning something and I had a few extra ones that weren't really specific to watercolour so I thought I'd do this video I thought you'd find it interesting of course it's just meant to spark a discussion I'm not saying I'm right about these things it's, it's my channel I'm going to put my opinions up do feel free to disagree in the comments but please keep it polite I don't need any trolls I will just delete you because I'm far too busy to bother with stuff like that so as I said feel free to disagree but do keep it friendly so my first unpopular art opinion is that you do not need to follow full step-by-step -step tutorials to learn to paint now I'm not saying there's anything wrong with step-by-step -step tutorials goodness I make my living from putting them out lots of people like them lots of people enjoy them and lots of people get a lot of value from them and they can be very valuable in learning to paint what I'm saying is that you don't have to do them if it's not in your personality or you don't find it useful. If you specifically don't find it useful, then you don't have to do them. And I'm going to share something with you now. I have never in my entire life, even when I was a very beginner artist, I have never followed a step-by-step -step tutorial. Now, I'm not saying I never had tuition. I had a lot of tuition. I went to a lot of classes. I studied a lot of things and I learned from a lot of artists. But I never did the thing where you follow each stage of a painting and reproduce the painting that the artist did. I didn't follow videos. I mean, when I started painting, you know, there wasn't a lot of, you know, YouTube wasn't such a big thing. Was it even a thing? I can't remember. But there were DVDs that you got and things like that from the library, really showing my age now, aren't I? But also an awful lot of step-by-step -step tutorials in magazines, and there are still step-by-step -step tutorials in magazines, and lots of people love them. Now, one of the magazines that I used to read when I was starting out was called Artists and Illustrators here in the UK. And it was kind of a semi-professional magazine in that it had a readership that was made up of professional artists and a readership that was made up of amateur artists. Now the amateur artists used to write in and say, please, can we have more step-by-step -step tutorials? You don't do enough step-by-steps in this magazine. And then the professional artists would write in and they would say, oh, for goodness sake, can we just stop with those ridiculous step-by-step -step tutorials. We don't want to do them. We're not interested in them. You just leave them out of the magazine. So you can see we had sort of two opinions here. And for me starting out, I never wanted to uh, copy what another artist did. Now, as I said, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with step-by-step -step tutorials. A lot of people find them a very useful way of learning. And that's the thing. We all learn in different ways. For me, I was much more keen to study techniques and to study specific ways of working, to study colour theory, to study drawing, perspective, things like that. And after that, I sort of found my own way with subjects. So it really does depend on your personality. And, you know, they've done lots of studies, haven't they, about, you know, some people are better at learning by reading, some people are better at learning by watching demonstrations, and some people are better at learning by following along. So I really don't want you to uh, misunderstand this first point of mine that I'm saying that step-by-step step tutorials are bad as I said you know I've made my career from doing them partially anyway I've had a very long very um, complicated career but part of what I do now is step-by-step -step tutorials and you know people take these in different ways so there are artists that get you to paint you know exactly as they do and even in my step-by-steps I never expect people to paint exactly the same as me and I never like to give them you know exact colors I'll give them a list of the colors that I've used but then I'll give them options as well and I like to think that when people do my step-by-step -step tutorials they kind of make them their own and that is how I propose that you approach step-by-step -step tutorials because if you try to follow them too exactly and try to get the exact results that the artist that's teaching them has got then you're likely to be disappointed and it's not just because the artist who's teaching is better than you it's because they have a different style to you so I do encourage you if you do them to make them your own and if you really don't like step-by-step -step tutorials if they're just not for you you know just accept that don't think that you have to learn to do step-by-steps that you have to you know this is the only way that you can learn I have never done one in my life 
So most of the things I'm telling you today are just my opinion, but this one does have some basis in science, and that is there is no one set of primaries that will mix everything. And I'm not talking about science here. I'm not talking about light levels. I'm not talking about scientists extracting light, you know, refraction of light, all of that stuff, and finding one set of primaries that can mix every color, because in theory that is a possibility. However, I'm talking about artists dealing with natural pigments and synthetic pigments, mixing every single color from one set of primaries. It's just not possible. Now, a lot of you will say, well, okay, but you need a split primary set. You need a warm and cool version of each primary. And yes, this will get you a lot more colors, but it still won't mix every color that there is. For instance, if we take something like a single pigment green, it just exists that way in nature. If it's a natural substance or if it's been produced in some way, I'm thinking of something, you know, like a green oxide. Sure, you could take yellows and blues and you could make an approximation, but you wouldn't get the exact specific qualities. There's been a lot of talk lately on, uh, on Facebook about artists finding, you know, that one set of primaries or that one set of split primaries that they can mix everything from. And there's been this kind of fad to try and replicate CMYK. So if you know about primaries, you'll know that um, artists use red, yellow, and blue. Now, scientists use green, red, and blue. And that is because scientists can split green into its component parts, its light parts of yellow and blue, but artists can't take green pigment and get yellow and blue out of it. So we have to work the other way around. Then you have printers. Printers use CMYK. That's cyan, which is a type of turquoise blue. And then you get the white is yellow. M is magenta, which is a pinkish red. And then you get um, K, which I won't go into, but it's black, basically. And there's been this kind of thing on the art forums recently. If CMYK mixes every color, then we can just replicate CMYK with artist colors, and then we can mix every color too. Well, the downside to this is that CMYK does not mix every color. And if you have ever spoke to um, a really good printers, you will understand this. Now, I've been making watercolor mixing guides for years, and I've had to deal with printers. I've had to take, you know, hand-painted swatches to printers, and to get them to replicate those, under the CMYK system, it's not possible to replicate every color because it has its limitations. And this is why Pantone colors were, uh, were brought into being. You can Google that if you want to know what they are, but basically it's a much more accurate and expensive way of mixing specific colors. So the idea that a single set or a, uh, you know, even a split set of primary will mix every single color that you need for watercolor painting is not true. You can mix a vast, vast array of colors from your split primary set, but there are some colors that you simply can't replicate and certainly some natural pigments. And the way I work, I like to have a large range of colors, but I don't like to get sort of weighed down with choosing or having too many colors in one painting because you like to have that limited palette that makes everything hang together. So what I tend to do is have a very vast range of uh, colors, and this has happened almost by accident because manufacturers just send them to me sometimes now. I know, poor me, how hard is my life? What I like to do is to choose a limited palette palette for a specific painting. If you'd like a video on how to choose a palette for a specific painting, I'm happy to make one of those too and show you the, uh, the process that I go through in order to get a smaller set of colors to get that beautiful sort of um, overall effect where you get a certain atmosphere, a certain hanging together of a painting, even though you're starting with, you know, maybe hundreds of colors and how to choose specific colors for each painting. Some of it is personal and of course it's led by the subject. Let me know if you'd like that video. Just pop a comment down in the description. Meantime, be aware that if you're looking for one set of primaries that mixes everything, you're likely to be disappointed. At this point in the video, if you're enjoying this video and getting some value from it, could I please ask you to click that like button, that thumbs up, really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. If you can like, share, subscribe, or leave me a comment, YouTube will push this video out to more people. And I'm extremely grateful to all of you who watch me here on YouTube. So my next unpopular art opinion is that you absolutely must learn to draw. Now I see on a lot of uh, beginners watercolor forums, people are tracing and, you know, I'm not gonna call you out for tracing. I'm not gonna give you a hard time if you have trouble drawing. That would be really, really mean of me. And I do understand it can be overwhelming. And I'm also not saying that you have to be fantastic at drawing. You have to learn everything about drawing before you ever pick up a paintbrush. That again would be extremely dull and you know, you can just be overwhelmed by all this and you think, well, I'm no good at drawing. I'm never gonna be any good at drawing, but I really like painting. So what I'd like to say to you is that drawing is important. It's so important and it's important for every single medium because 
Drawing is just mark making and when you're painting you need to make marks. It doesn't matter what your art medium is, whether you're sculpting or whether you're you know, carving lino, you need to have manual dexterity and you need to be able to make marks in the places where you want them and drawing teaches you this. So as I said, I'm not saying that you can't start painting until you've learned everything there is to know about drawing. I'm not saying that you can never ever use a drawing aid or you know, a grid system or a piece of tracing paper. But all I'm saying is that do understand how important drawing is and do vow to try and improve your drawing just in small little pieces each time you do a piece of art. That way you can continue to paint, you can continue to enjoy the process of creating art, but also have your eye always on drawing and stop telling yourself that it's impossible for you to learn it. It's a really, really basic skill. I'm actually in the process of making a course, which is going to be a complete beginner's drawing course, and it'll be ready at the end of 2021. So that's an online course. If you're in my Facebook group or on my mailing list, then you'll find out all about that one. And there are details in the description of this video of how to get on the mailing list and where to go to find the Facebook group. But meantime, I want you to stop telling yourself that you can't draw and tell yourself that um, it's a process and that you'll continually improve. And this is something that you'll continue strive for because like it or not drawing is just a basic skill for creating all artwork and even when you see those really good abstract painters and those really good loose painters they all started out with drawing skills and those of you that are trying to paint loosely or trying to paint abstract in order to avoid learning to draw you're doing everything absolutely backwards being abstract or being a loose painter isn't an absence of drawing skills. It's not a shortcut. You start with the drawing skills and then you move on to being loose or abstract if that particular pathway suits you and suits the type of art that you like to create. So stop telling yourself that you can't draw and tell yourself that you're going to just gradually improve your drawing and overall that will improve all of the other artwork that you produce. So my next unpopular opinion goes right on from the last one and that is loose painting or abstract painting is sometimes used as a cover for a lack of skill. Now I'm not having a go at loose painters or abstract painters, there are some absolutely fabulous ones out there who are incredibly skilled. But there are also an awful lot of semi-professional or amateur artists or would-be professional artists who are using loose painting as a sort of a cover or to cover up the fact that they don't have a very good control of whatever medium it is that they are working in and they're actually quite easy to spot if you spot an artist who just seems to be a one-trick pony who always does the same sort of paintings you know who always does loose flowers or always does a sort of semi-abstract animal you know they just don't have a very large range sometimes this is just as I said a cover for the fact that they are not progressing at all and that there's a lack of skill there now I'm not having a go at those artists you know they sh they can just do their thing it doesn't matter to me at all but the reason I'm telling you this is if you are trying to follow along and if you're trying to follow a tutorial from one of those artists then do be aware you know do consider whether they have a wide range of skills to share with you and whether you may end up just getting frustrated because you're not getting the same results as them if they can't fully explain how they're getting those results it may be because they haven't built them up from any basis of understanding the medium of understanding the materials and of understanding drawing skills i've actually had people come into my art classes before now I had uh, somebody come into my art class, in fact three ladies came into my art classes and they said to me, they came together and they said to me that the previous class they had been in, they stayed there for five years, the teacher wouldn't let them draw anything, the teacher made them trace everything. Now what does this say to me? All this says to me is that the teacher can't draw and the teacher is therefore afraid of being called out for not being able to do something. So as I said, you know, it doesn't matter to me what other artists do, what their style is, or the kind of art that they put out there. But if you're trying to learn from those people and they seem to have a very, very limited range and they only do very loose work and they don't go into you know, very much explanation of how they got certain effects, how they mixed certain colors, how they drew certain things, then you want to consider this maybe a cover for lack of skill. And if you ever, you know, none of us know everything. If you ask me a question, I may not know the answer to it. But if you frequently ask your teacher or the tutor that you're following, you know, questions about materials, questions about techniques, questions about mediums, and they can't answer any of these questions, you probably want to find yourself a different tutor. So this next unpopular opinion is a bit like putting a knife in my own back, really. And that's saying that to be a professional artist, you know, the main skill that you need is not being good at art. Now, most professional artists are, of course, good at art and do have art skills. 
But those of you that are thinking of turning professional or becoming you know, semi-professional, what I want to tell you is that there are really some important life skills that you need in order to be an artist, and very few of them are connected to the ability to make art. So when I started out as a professional artist, I noticed that there were artists that were really you know, not very good at all and had really great careers and they'd, you know, got things published and they'd had, you know, work printed on posters, you know, maybe in one of these uh, big shops or something like that. They'd uh, license their work and I'd be looking at it thinking, well, that's really not very good at all. And I didn't know how they became so successful. And then on the other hand, I would see artists who were much better than me, who had the most stunning paintings and drawings. And they really never sold anything or you know had any success at all and i didn't really understand this until i began to realize how the art world works and to understand that business skills are absolutely a priority and there are other skills as well and so we can get bogged down at looking back at the past and looking back at you know artists and they had these you know these sort of enigmatic personalities didn't they and they were always loners and they you know some of them were a bit grumpy and um, they worked they were very messy they made a mess everywhere and they didn't always get on with people. Perhaps they, you know, caused a lot of trouble. And you know, think that that is how you uh, you be an artist. That you only have to be this, you know, crazy creative genius that starts drinking gin at 10 a.m. and throws paint all over the walls. And that if you're a good artist, you know, sales will just come to you. Well, I, you know, I'm here to uh, disillusion you. That is not the way the art world works <laughs> these days. And you are not going to have any success if you behave like that. People are probably just going to think you're a little bit crazy. And so a lot of the skills that you may not have even considered um, are really, really important. As are things nowadays like social media. You know, you have to be quite computer literate nowadays. You or at least have someone working for you that is. You have to be social media savvy. You have to have quite a, a agreeable personality because a lot of it is networking. And you have to be really, really good at business skills as well. So if you ever see someone who's got fantastic work and had no success and then, you know, compare them with someone that's got not very good work, has had amazing success, I want you to consider that there's a lot more skill involved in being a professional artist than just being able to paint. And there's also, you know, you have to accept if you are going to be a professional artist that you aren't going to paint all the time and that your day is not going to be filled with, um, you know, delightful sitting around making pictures. I wish it was, but I can assure you that, you know, well over half of my time is spent creating courses, writing things, making computer graphics, making videos, all sorts of other things. And even before COVID, I was out teaching real life classes all the time. And so there's a romanticism about being a professional artist. And I would say that success as a professional artist depends on far, far more than being a good artist. I hope that those of you that have seen my work think that I am a good artist, but at the end of the day, art is only subjective. You know, whether you like my own paintings or whether you dislike my paintings, isn't really a indicator of how successful my career will be and the same goes for you so if you're just good at painting and you're thinking to yourself that sounds awful and it just good at painting it's a wonderful thing to be good at painting but if you're good at painting and you're thinking of uh, taking a professional career or more of a professional approach or starting to sell your work i do want you to understand that you really do need a full uh, rounded skill set. I mean, especially when starting out, you're gonna to have to do everything yourself from advertising to accounts. If you can't afford to pay someone else, you're gonna to have to learn all sorts of new skills and your success is not predicated on how good your work is. So I'm gonna be really interested to see what you put in the comments of this video. As I said, please keep it friendly. It doesn't matter if you disagree with me, I'm only a person on the internet. Am I even real? Let's hope so. So leave your opinions in the comments. Also, before you leave this video, do pop into the video description. I've lots of free things for you there, including downloadable PDFs, even a free painting course. And I've spoken a lot in this video about drawing and the importance of drawing skills. So do have a look at my most popular drawing video, which is all about the 10 most common mistakes that I see people make. If you start to just correct some of these mistakes, you're gonna find that your drawing will improve immensely. You can watch that video right now.